Hello everybody, this is John Finn, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. want to invite you, if you're watching this uh, in early May of 2020, to our next Zoom web meeting on May 16th, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Central U.S. and Can Canadian time. So May 16th, 1 p.m. Central U.S. and Canada time. And that is, uh, you can go to our website, C-W-O-W-I, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. It stands for Church Without Walls International. We're all about the discipleship process, the supernatural process of integrating what we know and believe in the Lord uh, into our lives. And today, talking, you don't have to be a doormat. Now, I've covered this before, probably a couple years ago, but we've got a lot of new uh, viewers and everything, and it really was on my heart that this is specifically for today. So this may be you, and you need to know you're not a doormat. You should not be a doormat. Um, a, a lot of it's a misunderstanding through religion, perhaps well-intentioned, but still religion. And it's not understanding the context and the history of Matthew chapter 5, uh, part of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus said, uh, if someone smites you on one cheek or hits you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. Someone wants to take your coat, give him the other also. Someone compels you to walk one mile, then walk with them too. And, and much of that has been made about Christians and being um, uh, flexible and patient and taking the high road and everything else. And, and what happens is Christians get slapped back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's not what Jesus was talking about. In fact, the context of Matthew chapter 5 is the Sermon on the Mount, which was a private discourse. It started out as a private discourse between Jesus and his disciples. If you look at the end of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus went up in the mountains to have some time to himself. And uh, then his disciples came, and it says in Matthew 5, 1, when he was set, his disciples came to him, and he said. And he started that as a private discourse. Uh, by the end of chapter 7, the people had obviously found him because it said the people were astonished at his teaching because he spoke as one having authority, not like the scribes who said, well, scribe so-and-so and rabbi so-and-so says this. But Jesus spoke and said, this is how it is. And so in Matthew chapter 5, it's still early. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 all cover the Sermon on the Mount. And chapter 5 starts out where it's just Jesus and his disciples. And chapter 7 ends up where you can see the, the change in about halfway through chapter 6. He's obviously talking to a larger audience. Why is that important today? It's important because Jesus is giving this, in Matthew chapter 5, a private discourse, this private teaching to his disciples about how to behave in life about what's expected of those leaders, of those people who are walking with him, of the disciples. Later, he will talk in more general terms in Matthew chapter 7, especially to the general population. But now he's talking to his believers, his, his closest disciples. And he says this in verses 33 through, 33 through 37. First thing he says is don't forswear yourself. Uh, the Jews were very, very famous for, for swearing by the temple or, you know, today we might say, I swear on my mother's grave or something like that. And Jesus was saying, no, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. In other words, yes and no, be a person of your word. You don't need to, you know, don't need to invoke God or something greater than yourself to prove of what you say, what you say uh, is true, that you should be known such, as such a person of your word that if you say it, it's, it's as good as done. And so then he goes on, he says, um, you've been heard of it, it said in old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And uh, though I won't go into the full teaching here like I do on my series on the Sermon on the Mount, the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth today means if you hit me in the eye, I'm going to hit you back in the eye. But actually, as it was um, in Exodus 20 and, and elsewhere in Deuteronomy, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was restitution. It was quite literally that if you injure somebody and injure their eye or their, their foot or their hand or their mouth or their arm, then you had to repay. You had to provide restitution to make sure that foot or that arm or that eye uh, was taken care of. You had to pay for them medically. You had to make sure they were restored. And so an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth in original setting in scripture was restitution. That if I injure you, I'm going to make sure that it's right. 
And it's important to understand the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, that is the revenge motive, came along later under the Pharisees. But as Moses wrote it direct from God, it was restitution. There's even an example there that if you dig a pit and your neighbor's bull or ox or whatever falls into that pit and injures itself, you have to restore whatever that injury, injury is, hoof for hoof, horn for horn, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And so it's a matter of restitution and making things right. Now, the second thing is, Jesus goes on to say in verse 39, talking about restitution, talking about being a person of your word. He says, I say you don't resist evil. Whoever hits you on the right cheek, let him turn to him the other also. This is an ancient uh, reference to uh, reference to an ancient court system where, where when a misdemeanor was filed, and understand, Jesus is talking to his disciples. So he's saying, guys, you have to be people of your word. Guys, you have to be in this situation. If somebody takes you to court and sues you and it's successful, you have to do this. You have to be a person of integrity like this. And what he says is this. Uh, in, in the ancient times, if, if some misdemeanor happened, then the judge could say, okay, uh, you know, Mr. Smith, uh, you know, you owe him 50 shekels and he gets to slap you on the cheek because you so insulted and so injured him. So Mr. Smith would have to pay the 50 shekels and then stand there while the guy hits him on the side of the face. You know, in the, mid, in, in the Middle Ages, you know, the, the movies of the knights and the round table and all that, you have somebody picking up the, the glove and slapping him on their face and challenging him to a duel. You know, that's, an, that's a, a centuries later um, rendition of what was there in the first century. And so when Jesus said, you know, somebody hit you on the right cheek, turn him the other also, what he's talking about is restitution. You have been taken to court, you've been fined 50 shekels, and the judge says you owe the 50 shekels, and then, you know, Mr. Jones can hit you on the face uh, just to, to make sure that, you know, you understand he was insulted and hurt by that. And so, and so when Jesus said, when that happens, turn the other cheek just to make sure that Mr. Jones and you are reconciled, that you're even. Turn to him the other cheek, just as a matter of restitution, to make sure that, that things are good between you. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He wasn't talking about going boom, 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 like a punching bag. He was saying, you see, the, the beauty of what Jesus said is it places the limit on the extent by which a person can slap you around. In other words, you go as far as you can to, to give them the opportunity to say, yes, everything's right be between us. And if they slap you on the, on the one cheek because the court says they can do that, and you offer the other and they hit you there, that's it. That's as far as you have to go. You don't have to offer the other cheek. You have given them the extra uh, benefit. You have given, you've gone that extra bit for them just to make sure that everything is right. But if they still want to hold on to a grudge, that's on them. That's not on you. They will have to deal with it. Their problem at that point is with God, not with you. Their problem is with their own conscience, their own anger, their own bitterness and everything else, not with you. So you go your way. And to back this up, Jesus talked about this. Whoever sues you at the law and takes away your coat, let him have your cloak also. Again, this is the same thing. A judge could say, hey, uh, you know, you stole this or you took this. And so I'm, I'm saying, okay, uh, you owe them your, the coat. That's the value. That's the $300 value that you stole. You don't have that $300. Your coat's worth $300. You give them the coat. And Jesus said, if that happens, then you find something else to give them just to make sure over and above that you, you, that you make it right. This stems from the Leviticus chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, teaching on the, on the law of the trespass. In Leviticus 6, 1 through 6, the law says that if you stole something or you lied about something, you have to restore it to the person that you stole from or that you lied to. Uh, and, and you have to add 20% interest. You have to add a 20% fine based on the value of what you stole or took or lied about. And so that extra 20% is what Jesus is talking about. You're turning the other cheek. You're giving them your other coat if that is going to make peace between the two of you. And the fi final thing here in, in, in this, he says, and whoever compels you to go one mile, go two, is Matthew chapter 5, verse 41. That stems from an ancient Persian practice, not, not Babylon where Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, but the later empire, Persia, which was much larger than Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon that extended to Turkey, almost to the edge of Greece, all the way around the Middle East. And they developed a, a policy that if a decree went out from the king of, of uh, Persia, uh, from modern day Iraq, uh, that, that a, a rider by horse, camel, donkey uh, would go out throughout the kingdom and they would go run relays to, 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 to let the kingdom know about what, what the king has said. And so the law was that any messenger of the king could confiscate, could borrow your animal, your horse, your donkey, your camel, 
and use that for one mile. And then the messenger of the king had to return it or a, or a, or a distance which is agreed upon by both the owner of the animal and the messenger. And so what Jesus said, if somebody compels you to go one mile, go two. In other words, this is a messenger from the king. Sure, I'll go with you that mile. You've got to go walk with him because you want your animal back, you see. And, and so you go one mile and, he's, and he says, no, hey, let's go a second mile. Go the second mile just to make sure you've been a person of your word, that you've been above board, you've taken the high road, you've been a person of integrity. All these things have to do with that. Eye for an eye has to do with making things right, restitution. A slap on one cheek, turn the other also. It all has to do with making restitution. And that's why Jesus goes on to say, he concludes in Matthew chapter 5, he said, you've heard it been say that you love your neighbor and you hate your enemy. He said, no, no, no. I, I say you pray for the, your enemy. You pray for those. You bless those. You be mature in love like your father in heaven who causes the rain and the sun to fall and the shine on the just and the unjust alike. Be like him. So that's the whole context there. You're not supposed to be a, a welcome mat. You're not supposed to be a, somebody's whipping post or something like that. It is all about restitution. And the beauty of what Jesus said is that it places limits on the amount that you should be expected to restore to a person that you have injured. And it prevents them from abusing the grace that you're extending. So that's what it's talking about. That's what, a, a, that's what it is to be a Christian, is to be that person who is a person of your word, to be honorable and integrity. Go that extra mile, give that extra coat, turn that other cheek, but it means that you're doing everything you can within your power to be at peace with all men. If you do that and then they're not happy with it, that's on them, it's not on you. All right, God bless, talk to you later. Hey, remember to sign up for our uh, web meeting, April, uh, May 16th at one o'clock. CWOWI.org.